What happens after she drops the loot and makes a run for it? Plus, are your smart devices opening a digital door into your home? Ways cyber criminals can spy on you. Chances are your TV is listening to you. Also, infamous White House intern Monica Lewinsky. They're not being this resolution. How she's finally having her say on the Clinton sex scandal. Now, DailyMail.com, the world's most read newspaper website, brings you Daily Mail TV. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. It is great to have you with us, and we do want to get right to our top story, beginning with a murderous Marine down in Brandon, Florida. 33-year-old Brian Riley, a former Marine sharpshooter turned survivalist, is charged in a quadruple homicide after killing a family of four and their dog inside their home. We check in now with our senior reporter, Jen Smith, for more on this devastating story. And Jen, this was a random attack, absolutely no connection between Brian Riley and this family. Yeah, that's right, Thomas. Brian Riley just showed up at this house. Apparently, he was high on crystal meth. He told them that he had been sent by God to stop a girl called Amber from killing herself. But there was no one at the home by that name. He did go on to kill four people who were inside. They were Justice Gleason, his wife, Teresa Lanham, their three-month-old son, Jody, Jody's 62-year-old grandmother, and the family dog. Riley then barricaded himself inside the home. He was wearing body armor, but he was shot once by police he then surrendered unarmed now a court affidavit has revealed that when he was asked why he killed the baby he replied quote because i'm a sick guy i want to confess to all of it and be sent to jail brian riley has now been charged with 17 counts he is being held without bond thomas absolutely heartbreaking meanwhile an 11 year old girl was also shot that night but she did survive and is currently listed in critical condition but stable our jen smith reporting for us jen thank you very much now we turn our attention to hurricane ida's aftermath east coasters are still reeling from the devastation brought on by the flooding from this storm like this new jersey family whose basement wall collapsed from rushing water just moments after they were wading through that damage <laughs> Absolutely amazing. We go to our reporter, Kayla Brantley, who is joining us from the newsroom with more on this one. And Kayla, is everyone in that family okay after that horrendous wall collapse? Well, they are now, Thomas, but Janice at Valley of Cranford, New Jersey, says at one point, one of her sons thought he was going to die. The flood water trapped Janice and her son inside the basement while the water was rising. Her son was able to punch at a ceiling tile and find an air pocket so he could breathe, and he eventually did escape. Now, this is a story of survival, Thomas, but not everyone was so lucky. The New York City Police Department released this body camera footage of a rescuer trying to swim to the basement of an apartment building where a family of three drowned. 11 people drowned in New York City, and 10 of those were living in illegal basement apartments. It is just amazing to think of that much water in such little time, and this tragedy is truly shining a light on the housing crisis in the city, with some calling for landlords who rent out really unsafe and illegal basement apartments to be punished for that and to see some consequences. Our Kayla Brantley reporting for us. Kayla, thank you very much. Moving on to a getaway gone wrong in Illinois. Now, as a woman is caught on camera carrying a whole rack of stolen Nike merchandise just right out of the store, only for her accomplice to drive away without her. Female editor Charlie Langston is joining me now from the New York newsroom with more on this one. And Charlie, worst case scenario for that woman is saying the getaway driver takes off on her, but there's more to this story. What happens next? Well, Thomas, thanks to one beady-eyed TikTok user, we get to see this whole saga play out on camera. Now, in the video, the woman is seen screaming at her getaway driver to open the locked door. The driver then speeds off, the woman drops all of the clothing to the floor and runs after them. Now, as the woman is chasing her car, she's being chased by the police and they eventually catch up with her. Further down the parking lot, we do see the woman being led away in cuffs. Now, I'm not sure that anyone is getting out of this situation without some trouble, Thomas, because given the fact that the woman's getaway driver left her behind, I think she won't hesitate to spill names to the police immediately. So we have the Edwardsville Police Department, Charlie, yet to confirm this incident, but we will be on the lookout for charges also. And if this woman gives up her getaway driver, gives that name up. Charlie Langston reporting for us. Charlie, thanks. Next, a question for you. Are your smart devices spying on you? From your TV to your kitchen appliances, 
Kurt the Cyber Guy is breaking down how your latest tech could be an invitation to hackers and what you can do to actually stop them. Walk through your own home and you would be able to fill a sheet of paper with the listing devices that are all ready turned on. While homes are getting smarter every day, there's a catch. All those smart devices could be recording you or collecting your personal data. So smart appliances throughout your home, a lot of the stuff that people buy now, even a washer and dryer, could be hooked up to the Internet. Kurt the Cyber Guy Knutson warns that any device connected to the Internet has the potential to share some of your most personal information. Many of us have received a new TV over the last five or so years. And if you have and haven't taken the chance to make an adjustment to the privacy settings, chances are your TV is listening to you. The TV companies, you know, they want to know what's going on as far as user data, and they also want to resell that information. Smart TVs and popular third-party apps such as Netflix, Hulu, and HBO Max use automatic content recognition, or ACR, to not only recommend shows and movies you might like, but to target advertising based on what you talk about. You can head to your Smart TV's privacy settings to turn off ACR and stop the sharing of your viewing data. Another surprising appliance that could be recording you? Your thermostat. The ones that scare you are the ones that include microphones, and they are listening. And so you want to taper that microphone off on thermostats. Echo B is one of the leading thermostats that has microphones in it. I like it, but I did turn off the microphone. Not only is your data being sold for advertising, but smart devices put you at risk of cyber criminals accessing web-connected tech like your home security cameras or even financial data such as your credit card information. You can avoid ransomware attacks and security breaches by keeping your modem or router software up to date. Updating that software can seal a lot of holes from hackers. The Cyber Guy suggests outsmarting hackers with antivirus apps and software designed to protect all the devices in your home. One of those simple devices can really rein in your privacy. To learn how you can protect your home's cybersecurity and what software can guard all of your devices, be sure to head to cyberguy.com and also sign up for Kurt's newsletter for more tips and tricks. Moving on now to a topic little discussed, but depression in new dads? Previous studies have shown how common postpartum depression can be in new moms. But now, new research is highlighting how much it can impact fathers as well. And one dad is sharing his story of how he overcame his depression after the birth of his new son. I had to be strong for, for my wife and for Max. And so, you know, like the real emotional toll didn't really hit me until we got home. Stephen Hassan loves being a dad to 10 month old Max, but he and his wife had a difficult journey with their son who was born very premature. Max was in the NICU for 97 days. Stephen went through months of stress and worry before he realized he was suffering from depression. Having feelings of regret, why did I have this child, you know, I can't do this. Northwestern University researchers screened parents during their newborn's NICU stays and up to a month after discharge. They found 33% of mothers and 17% of fathers had symptoms of depression. And while mothers improved once their babies were home, surprisingly, some dads were still experiencing symptoms. It's possible that dad's depressive symptoms persisted because we really don't talk about it much or even acknowledge the fact that they also might be experiencing um, some trauma and anxiety and depression in this big shift to suddenly having a premature baby. Study author Dr. Craig Garfield says dads should be screened for signs of depression, such as trouble sleeping or increased anger. And they shouldn't be afraid to talk to their partner or a professional. There's a significant number of fathers out there who do need help. And when you help that father, you actually end up helping that baby and that mother as well. Max is now happy and healthy, and so too is Steven, who credits his family and his therapist for helping him. Mental health as a whole should be, you know, not a taboo topic because it's just like exercise or, you know, eating well. The Pacific Postpartum Support Society has helpful tips and resources for parents out there, fathers especially dealing with postpartum depression. For more information, visit postpartum.org. Let's move on now to rapper Offset, who is not a new dad, but actually now a father of five. Cardi B announced that she has given birth to her second baby, officially making her a mom of two now. 
It is important news, and senior correspondent Alicia Quarles is joining me now from our New York newsroom with more on this one. Alicia, this is huge news. Congratulations in order for this power couple for sure, but how did they keep this on the down low? Well, Thomas, you got it spot on. What exciting news, but you know, Thomas, even more exciting, it's a boy. So Cardi shared a photo on Instagram of her hubby Offset holding their son. He also posted a photo of himself in the hospital, and he captioned it, Chapter 5. Now, the rap superstars said in a statement, we are so overjoyed to finally meet our son. He's already loved so much family and friends and can't wait to introduce him to his other siblings. And Thomas, they have a daughter together, Culture, who's three. And Offset has three other kids from previous relationships. So congrats to the couple. Absolutely. Now, Offset's last album, it was titled Father of Four, so I'm sure the parents still pay homage in some way to this new son uh, when they get time to make a new recording, a new album, <laughs> and get back into the studio. Alicia Quarles reporting for us. Alicia, great to see you. Thank you very much. Now, please, stay with us. We've got much more Daily Mail TV headed your way. Later, the absolute worst hoarding horror ever. What happened when heaps of filth cut off access to the bathroom? Then, a shocking moment, her granddaughter starts to float away. Oh, and up next, good intentions, disastrous fails. From cakes that hilarious. The first sign is a sale? A customer at this grocery store took a photo of the 0% sale for stuffing mix. Uh, I hope that is a typo because uh, you're not saving any cash there on the stuffing mix. Now, next, this is a really bad sign if you need to call for help. So the sign reads, dial 999 for Coast Guard, police, fire, or ambulance. But as you look at that phone, hold on, it's missing the 9 button. They need to fix that right away. Who are you going to call? Now, baking, it is hard. Hard for a lot of us. But these baking fails will make you feel like a world-class chef. Now, this one mom ordered really cool Xbox game controller and ended up receiving this disaster cake instead? It's not even a close comparison, right? Well, this next cake has a really creepy smile, and the goal was to make a purple smiley face on it, but instead they, they got a cake that looks like a, a snowman. Uh, I hope it tasted good. Probably ugly cakes do taste good. Now, it's hard for everyone to keep up with all the new evolving technology, but it can be really, really hard, especially for our grandparents. Now, first, this one grandmother thought the live feed from the front camera on her cell phone was a photo. Uh, and you can imagine if she found out about selfies, that would be confusing, or about the man using a flashlight to help brighten his friend's iPad, even though it's an easy fix, that is a good friend offering to help you out right there, probably something I would do. Now, hair dye is hard to hide if not done properly. Always go to a pro. But this one girl is turning into a blueberry. She has blue hair, blue hair dye everywhere, on her face, on her hands, on her feet, and all over the shower. Look at that shower. She's going to be in trouble. Maybe she's trying to turn herself into a Smurf. Well, next, another girl tried to use a Walmart bag to help bleach her hair. However, she didn't think about the iconic Superstore logo from that bag being dyed into her hair. Transferred right on her head. I hope that can be fixed. A pro could fix it. And those are just the fix for today. That was a great round. Stay with us, everybody. Much more Daily Mail TV is headed your way. Coming up, the absolute worst hoarding horror global mail. And we do want to start with infamous White House intern Monica Lewinsky, who is publicly revisiting the Clinton sex scandal for the very first time and revealing if she is still waiting on an apology from the former president. There was a long period um, before my life changed the last six or seven years where it, I felt a lot in terms of there not being this resolution. And I'm, I'm very grateful that I don't have that feeling anymore. I don't need it. He should want to apologize. Um, in the same way that I want to apologize any chance I get to people that I've hurt and my actions have hurt. DailyMail.com's female editor, Charlie Langston, is joining me now from our New York newsroom with more on this one. And Charlie, it really is interesting to hear from Monica Lewinsky after all these years. It really is, Thomas. And, you know, I think it was always inevitable that this scandal, which took place over 25 years ago, would get the Hollywood treatment eventually. And now it has, thanks to Ryan Murphy. Now, Monica says that she was thrilled to have a seat at the table. She served as a producer on the show, and while she didn't have veto power in how her story was dramatized, she said that she does believe she had a voice and she was hurt. In fact, Monica actually pushed for a scene in which she flashes her song to the president to be included in the show because she felt that omitting it would threaten the credibility of the series. As for whether Bill and Hillary are planning to tune in, Monica says she doesn't mind, but I'm going to bet that they aren't going to watch it, Thomas. 
Probably not. Uh, I don't think they're going to have this one on their uh, list of must-watch summer binge things or fall binges. Uh, but for all of us that do want to watch, we can catch Impeachment American Crime Story. That's going to be airing right now on FX. Charlie Langston reporting for us. Charlie, thank you very much. Meanwhile, in the UK, new photos show the disgusting house of horrors left behind by a hoarder. Reporter Andrew Bullock is joining me now for more on this one. And Andrew, the professional cleaner here says this was the worst ever job they've had. Yes, he does, Thomas, and you are about to find out why. Jake Ritchie and his team were hired to tackle this absolutely horrific home in Sunderland that was covered in mess. It took them more than three days to shovel through all this trash. And at one point, they discovered that the hoarder tenant had even hung bags of excrement onto door handles because they couldn't make their way through the rubbish to get to the bathroom. I don't know what they were paid to do this job, Thomas, but I can guarantee you it was not enough. Boy, oh boy, I agree with you right there. And they did an incredible job. The results are truly mind-blowing. Andrew Bullock reporting for us. Andrew, great to see you. Thank you. Up next for your teenage social media sensation, Jojo Siwa was spotted out in L.A. celebrating the release of her brand new film. Reporter Caitlin Becker is joining us now from the L.A. newsroom with more on this one. Caitlin, great to see you. Hi, Thomas. Well, September is shaping up to be really huge for Jojo Siwa. Her new film, The J-Team, premiered at the new Hollywood hotspot, The Breakfast Club, where she and her girlfriend, Kylie Prue, enjoyed all the favorites from the menu and, of course, finished the night with an outrageous ice cream sundae. Now, Jojo will definitely be able to hit up that all-you-can-eat ice cream bar quite a few times while she is in town preparing to compete on the latest season of Dancing with the Stars. The 18-year-old is set to make history as half of the first same-sex couple competing on the reality show when it kicks off season 30. All right, that will certainly be the dancing duo to watch when the competitive dance series premieres on September 20th on ABC. Our Caitlin Becker reporting. Caitlin, thank you. <laughs> wow, can you imagine? So this is Jordan Flom, and he and his wife, Rachel, well, they decided to play a little trick on Rachel's mom with the help of their baby. Now, the baby Emerson here is tied with balloons and it looks like the baby is actually floating away but it's Jordan hiding behind the doorway lifting her up and moving her ever so slightly that gives grandma the impression that she's floating away well Rachel films this whole thing getting grandma's reaction as she springs into action to save her flying granddaughter and she looks so relieved to realize that Jordan has been holding the baby the entire time as he dances out from the doorway and that is your last piece of mail <laughs> DailyMail.com is where the world gets it to. So please, follow us online 24-7. I'm Thomas Roberts, and we do appreciate your time. So thank you very much for watching, and we will see you right back.